Good morning, Ron. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. I attended this conference in Florida um, a few years ago, so I'm really happy to be here today. Oh, nice. And I love this idea, Chloe, of the warm glow of inspiration. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can bring some of that this morning. Too. <laughs> Absolutely. No pressure, Ron, but fingers crossed we'll be delivering that in our first session of the day. Why not? Um, Ron, now, it's really lovely to have you, and thank you again for, for jumping up and doing our opening keynote with us for our day three. Your retail career spans 25 years and includes various roles for some of the world's leading brands. And your book, Retail Pride, which I can see over on your left shoulder there, was published last year. So I think it would be really great at the start to contextualise. Tell us a bit about why you're here, why you wrote the book in the first place, and really what this subject means to you. Yeah, thank you, Chloe. You know, I, for anyone that spent time leading stores, working in stores, maybe potentially began your career. One of the things that I love most about this industry is how much pride people in stores show. But but first and foremost, you know, it truly is the most dynamic, inspiring, energetic, um, challenging industry to work in in the world. And in, not only because of its impact in the industry, but how people really interact with each other. But the challenge was, and kind of what brings me here today, is that through the journey of you know, the conversation around the death of retail and the retail apocalypse and this conversation that started to happen a few years ago, for me, it really pushed me to say, wait, the future of retail is people. The future of what we do is so centered around how we inspire each other and our customers, the work that we do, the images that we see on LinkedIn every day are really about pride. And at the same time, we I would travel around the country and visit my own stores. Um, I'd speak to retail leaders. I did a lot of work. And often the first conversation that I would meet a candidate, they would say, well, you know what, this was entirely accidental. I had no intention of working in retail. And it was a really common conversation. And the other side, would, someone would say, oh, you know, I just work in retail. I don't actually, I wanted to do something else. And I would stop them and say, let's just set the stage. Let's say you are, an, you are a store manager today in a $3 million store, pretty standard in the US. I would say you run a multi-million dollar business. You have to be an expert in store operations, visual merchandising, product knowledge, HR, probably some loss prevention thrown in on occasion. You have to be an expert in so many different things that take pride in what you do. Celebrate the fact that you probably learned this on your own, that you may have come into this accidentally, but the the way that we speak about this industry, I think has never been more important because this is how we will continue to grow it, celebrate it, recognize it, get people to choose this as a retail career is to say, this is the best choice you can make. And one of the most challenging and interesting things that you can do. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm so passionate about this industry and, and why I wrote a book about it. I was going to say, Ron, you seem so animated and passionate about it. It's really coming through. That must have been quite an exciting journey whilst you were researching for it. Can I ask, having not read the book myself yet, but it will be post-summit reading for me, who were you able to speak to on that journey whilst you were doing research? Can you give any examples of those retail leaders that you got the chance to really engage with to support the creation of your book? You know, I did. There are, um, to be specific, 30 people quoted in my book of um, friends, colleagues, um, some of the reasons, you know, I, I write in there about the top 10 reasons why we love working in retail. And one of them is that we create friendships that can last for decades. And I have 30 plus year friendships with people who I have worked in retail with that um, I used to quote. I have brand new people that join the industry. I really wanted to think of it from the approach of every role adds value, everyone contributes and to recognize that this is not just a conversation about those of us that have the honor and the responsibility to lead, but those that are doing the work. And that for me was an important conversation. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Really looking forward to actually getting to read it myself. And you alluded to there, Ron, that obviously retail was changing before COVID, but it has changed 
significantly in the last 12 months, of course. And with this surge of e-commerce and the increase of customers being used to digital transactions, obviously the future of physical stores is seemingly uncertain. And it's something we've talked about over the last two days of the summit. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on what skills do you think are really needed to run retail today in this new world that we find ourselves in? Sure. And so I, I think today we could all agree, and I'm sure that the conversation in the last couple of days had said this, is that we've never been more technology obsessed. We are trying to figure out what is the best technology? What are the best resources? How do we make this the most seamless? So I think we are technology obsessed, but we've also never been more people centric because the people doing the work uh, in stores today have to have a skill set that has never been wider. And so if I'm a million dollar salesperson and I do lead a team of commissioned salespeople who generate significant revenue, their, their responsibilities to now are, I have to be an expert in tech. I have to be an expert in potentially, maybe I'm doing some web fulfillment orders. Um, I'm chatting through people on the website. I'm doing work through a clientele app. So there's this balance of right, le right brain, left brain, the work continues to merge and their expertise is so important. I you know, would go back again and say, the best people that do um, the best work in our industry are proud of what they do and celebrate that. So I say, let's first make sure that you love what you do and, then, and that you're recognized for it. And then let's teach you some new skills. So those skills could be um, the ability to hire great people. Those skills could be, you know, communicating what you stand for. They could be um, how you make everyone feel important. You know, I think about you know, every every unique role has never been more stretched mm -hmm. today. And there's there are a number of things you have to do, but it's um, recognizing that today every component of it has both a technology component and a human component. Yeah, of course. And when we're talking about the conversation of skills, and you mentioned there are a few skills that people running retail really need to encompass in order to get the most from this year. What about skills that leaders need to adopt to empower retail teams? Because you've mentioned already, it's so important that employees are involved in this process as well. So how can we empower them better? I love this conversation around um, kind of the three pillars of retail success. And I, I choose these words, it's retail success, not leadership, because I think everyone can be exceptional if you kind of think about these three components. So the number one is empathy. And in whether that's how you are empathetic with the customer walking through the door, the empathy that you choose to show with your team, with your coworkers, with your corporate business partners, you know, there's a level of empathy that's important today when we think about the challenges of the last year that is a pillar to success. And great leaders that demonstrate that level of empathy will continue to be successful in retail. The second one is really curiosity and highly curious people that are curious, again, about their customer, why the customer is there, how we can make this experience better, what product are they looking for, um, how can I support you? What can I learn about our industry? Uh, maybe it's new technology. So this constant sense of curiosity, of um, learning and growing and asking great questions, that's how we get better. And in the last one that I talk about is focus because retail, for all of us that work in stores knows every day is different. Every day when you open the door, you don't know what's gonna happen. You may have, more traffic than you expected, you may have no traffic. You may have someone that called in sick for the day and you may have a full team that's ready to go. And great retail leaders can really set up the day and say, this is what I need to accomplish. No matter the obstacles, no matter the fly balls, no matter what's happened, I'm gonna focus on delivering an exceptional experience for my team and for my customer today. And if, when I think about those kind of, again, pillars of empathy that I'm in a very human centric way, I'm highly curious and I'm focused on what I need to accomplish. 
If I can get those done, I feel like I'm going to win the day. And tomorrow it starts all over again. Yeah, I love those. Those three pillars. I've noted them down even. Empathy, curiosity and focus. We'll make sure that we remember those. That's some really good points there, Ron. Thank you. So as the world will eventually ease back to brick and mortar experiences, whether it's 2021, 2022, we'll see new physical retail experiences for both our customers and our teams. But we also know that a large portion of work is now still going to be carried out remotely. I think we've learned over the last 12 months that is a way that a lot of our workforce is still going to want to work where possible. So alongside the skills you mentioned that we need to run retail today, do you think the way in which we measure success within the sector should also change based on the way that we're now working? You know, I, I do because you know, I think we're all from an actual KPIs standpoint, we're all trying to navigate what that looks like. And I'm sure that conversation has come up this week. But I would say, I would go back to the human side and we would say, the future of retail is people. And say, then how can I recognize what great success looks like? There are things like you know, net promoter scores and um, customer service surveys that can really celebrate and recognize who's doing good work who is um, continuing to deliver exceptional service. The customers recognize people by names. I say that is, that is one way to, to celebrate, regardless of the financial numbers, that there's a level of connection and service that's being delivered that the customer is telling you is great. So I think that's number one. MPS has been you know, important for years. Today, I, I take a very deep dive into NPS scores. I think it's also peer-to-peer -peer recognition. You know, mm -hmm. So how do you celebrate what the, the company culture and values? How do you recognize your own um, team in new and different ways? So I had to really even challenge myself last year, um, again, leading a team of commissioned salespeople that was always about, you, know, you hit that $2 million mark, sell more, do more, who can have the highest sales, which stores have the best results? And you know, it, that was really tough. And I had to even reinvent the whole way I thought about recognition and say, it's actually the most important thing I can do is to say thank you. Because the work that you do and the kind of front line of retail, if, if I can just have a moment to write a handwritten note, to make a phone call, to have a Zoom call, and to say thank you, that is, for me, the, the ultimate expression of recognition. It's a really good point and we did actually touch on this very briefly on day one that recognition is super important to all of our associates and employees but also making them feel like they have a purpose and they are integral to the journey and that is often all you need to do to make sure you keep them motivated in times where it has been quite turbulent so it's always good to like you say recognize what about the other side of that what about things like keeping morale up because i think the question of mental health and well-being has become so prominent over the last year, and rightly so. So if we're looking, pa looking past traditional KPIs for more dynamic and innovative tools to manage people, do you have any suggestions of what people might be able to do? So I, I again, had to really rethink this myself. And so I was someone who gets all of my energy and joy from being in stores. Mm -hmm. And I traveled pretty aggressively, at probably 50% of my time, and I said, okay, I have to really reinvent. If, if I can't visit a store, what am I going to do? And I said, the best thing I can do is to be the most visible um, version of that. So maybe it is you know, office hours that are available to anyone via Zoom. I've done a lot of store visits kind of with technology just like this. I have done more kind of all hands town hall calls. I have worked really hard to just be that much more um, available and clear and to talk about what's important, to talk about um, what the company opportunities are and how we can be even better. And so I, where I think the, the some of the challenges have been from a field organization is that they don't always know what's happening at the top and that the more communicative we can be, the more transparent we can be, um, that builds a level of trust that I believe has set up uh, kind of success um, as business has come back, as cost has been put back into stores. Um, there's a, that 
idea of motivation through transparency uh, is something that I take very seriously and I think is, uh, is could be a winning pillar. Do you think, Ron, is it fair to say that maybe the last 12 months have made you a different leader and potentially a better one because of all the things you've had to implement? Different for sure. You know, and in every time we learn, so if I go back and say, if I was highly curious about what do you need? So let's think about asking questions of, if I can't visit you in person, what's the best version of making sure you get what you need? So it is it more, more phone calls with corporate business partners? Is it more Zoom? You know, I do work in the fashion business and and understanding what's happening in trend and what's coming new to my store and what's the buying team working on. It's that it isn't even just me. It's saying all of us are here to support the field. And the field thrives on communication and inspiration. And so, yes, I had to, to take my own um, tools and apply that to other parts of the industry and other parts of the company. And, you know, what I've also love the fact that there have been other retail networking events and other work that's been done um, that has provided opportunities um, for all of us to talk about what's important and, and the challenges that we've had. So not even, even forums like this, but, you know, I've been hosting, I call it Saturday morning with Ron, that is pure <laughs> networking to say, you know what, anyone's welcome to join. Saturday morning's our favorite day in retail. Let's start it off with some inspiration and fun and networking. And I use Zoom to host that myself. So I'm, I'm trying to create this energy and drive and connection point and building networks for our industry that I think has been an opportunity that now is wide open and ready to be taken. Is there a Saturday morning with Ron tomorrow? <laughs> Um, for the summer, we're doing monthly because you know people kept saying, you know, Ron, I'm busy on Saturday. Um, but so yes, it's monthly, and um, it's I, I talk I put it under the events page of retailpride.com. So whilst not everything survives, of course, the opportunity to utilize technology in store to bridge this gap of the offline online divide is going to be front and center as we embrace the new face of retail, of course. How is technology changing the way we shop as consumers? Mm -hmm. So I think the, what we've learned is that the sometimes that inspiration that needs to happen on a website through technology happens via conversation with people who are experts. And so maybe that is chat functions through your website. So you know, we use that today at Intermix. Um, being able to log on and chat with in-store stylists for advice on you know, brands and fit and styling and maybe an event that you're attending. So there's this conversation that's quite fluid between online and offline. And so we see great conversion rates that happen when that chat and great questions are answered that are not just customer service, but they're actually fashion and advice and fit and style. You know, but the the fact is that we the statistic is that we check our phones on average 150 times a day and that chat functions and maybe it is um, text to have a conversation with the store, text to pay, text to write reviews. There's a lot of conversation around how to use technology that is seems human, that is quick, that is not sending an email to someone, that we all expect speed and that stores are learning how to navigate in human, in person, kind of one-to-one -one human interaction and creating that same level of connection with someone that's, that's texting you. And that is also one of those new skills that great people in retail have had to learn how to do, how to build relationships, how to sell via technology. And maybe it's live shopping, maybe it's, um, kind of just new ways to engage. And that's what I love this conversation around new things happening in tech, but at the same time, they are all so people centric and that the best versions of that happen with people who really know how to sell and live shopping. You know, I think we've probably all seen some great versions of that where you can't wait to place an order. 
and some versions that felt a little more, you know, awkward. Um, and so I want to really create platforms where everyone can feel comfortable in these new worlds and to think about the modern approach is the merging of how all that works, but it takes special skill for people to do that. Of course. How long do you think that this idea of unified retail, how long do you think it's going to take for it to become a reality? You know, it's, it's been a version of reality for, for quite a long time, but you know, every brand has had some version of you know, in-store web fulfillment, probably some version of Bopus. Um, there's been a lot of tech, but today I think that it will continue to ask. Get from them individually. Yeah, that completely makes sense. Um, Ron, you've mentioned how much we need to put people at the heart of everything we do, whether that be our customers, whether that be our employees. And I know a lot of the audience today will be thinking, so what does that mean for recruitment? of these people because it is a new world it is a very different landscape i know that you're already exploring some new ways to hire teams via technology could you maybe tell us a little bit more about that i'd love to so there there are some new technology happening there's one um and i'm not here to promote them but it's called job pixel that is about video based job applications and job postings and so if i think about our industry that as we've spent the last 20 minutes talking is so people, personality, engagement um, centric, that if you can post jobs, if I, if I posted a job and said, hi, this is Ron from Intermix. We have an opening today in our Madison Avenue boutique and I need someone that can come in and engage. And I would love to drop me a video of why you think you're the best candidate for this job. That is so much more powerful than a post on a website that says there's an opening for a sales associate. And if that sales associate can then say, Ron, I'm the best person for that job because I worked here and there. I love to engage with customers. I love to, um, I love fashion, et cetera. It's here are my favorite brands. There's so much you can do. Mm -hmm. As that technology evolves in the way that we've hired has been pretty broken and we need to elevate this to say, let's talk about video, let's talk about how we work together and how this can evolve. So I love this idea of new ways to hire and recruit that are an evolution of our industry. Sounds great. So really bringing the human connection back to talent acquisition, which is certainly very, very something much so. that we definitely need at the moment. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations again on the huge success of your book. Can't wait to see more from you over the next couple of years. And hopefully next time we're all in Manhattan for another event, we can do another face-to-face -face meeting I would and love summit. That. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. It's been Thank a pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chloe. Thanks, everyone.